Hello, welcome to Mr. Snail's Wild Ride. I am Mr. Snail, and the Wild Ride is my life so far. One of the many significant turns in the Wild Ride of my life, after my wife's life-threatening illness, and the reconstructive surgery, and after her long battle with depression was won, she got us a dog. Notice I didn't say she suggested we get a dog, or she tried to convince me that we should get a dog, she told me we were getting a dog. The original family plan was that my wife was going to be the breadwinner. I was going to stay at home, take care of the babies, make music in the home studio. Now, I've told you about how everything bad happened. So with that whole plan scrapped and my wife disabled, uh, it fell upon me to win the bread. So with my useless undergrad degree and my spotty work history, I decided I had to go back to school. So my wife was home alone. So we got a dog. Now I had grown up largely without pets due to asthma and allergies, but I said, hey, let's give it a try. See what happens. I can always, you know, get shots, take Benadryl or whatever. So we went and got our first dog from the Chicago Pound uh, right after the 4th of July weekend. And in about three days after having brought the dog home, I said, I think we'll always have a dog. I was totally hooked. Now, it's fairly well known that neurotypical people benefit greatly in terms of uh, physical, mental, emotional health from having pets. But it has also been widely documented in scientific literature that people on the autism spectrum respond well to animals too, generally better than to people. Animals help uh, with recovery from meltdowns. They oftentimes help uh, sidestep meltdowns. They can even encourage social interaction with other people. I am no exception. As I've said before, when I get overstimulated or overwhelmed or overtired, if I'm at home, I retreat into my cave, which is our bedroom, and I just chill out for a while to recharge a little bit. Now, I definitely recharge faster if one of our dogs or our cats is in there with me. So I guess this is as good a time as any to introduce our current bizarro menagerie. I say bizarre because we have pretty much two of everything, and that was not by plan, and we didn't get two of everything at the same time, and it seems like every one of them has something weird wrong with them, but all of that aside, this is Emmett. As you can tell, he's very high energy. This is Eddie, and his friend the fox, we call him Foxy. I guess technically it's a her, since Eddie hasn't ever made any moves toward Quimby, our other cat. Eddie and Foxy spend a lot of time together. Sometimes just hanging out, cleaning, sometimes doing other things. Eddie probably wouldn't want me to share this, but he and Foxy have what could only be described as an intimate relationship. It's complicated. Let's just leave it at that. This is Daisy the ferret. My wife had wanted ferrets since she was a kid, but she used to be really allergic. One day at a pet store, we checked it out and she'd apparently grown out of it. We got our first batch, a group of four, from a ferret rescue just outside of Chicago. Daisy was a rescue I found later through petfinder.com while my wife was out of town, and she found out about her on Twitter. Oops. Ferrets have very distinct, different personalities. I highly recommend them as pets. They're hilarious, especially in groups. This is Quimby, the other of our two cats. He's eating, obviously. We have to keep the cat food on top of this tower thing, because otherwise the dogs would eat. He's a sweet guy. He loves people. You can see here he has a, no tail. He was actually born without a tail. One of his sisters in the litter, her tail was only about three or four inches long. I wanted to name him Nub, but my wife wouldn't go for it. And here's Calder, our very first dog from the Chicago Pound. He's hanging out because when Quimby eats, uh, he often drops food off of the tower. And Calder wants to be right on hand to help clean it up. 
right, buddy? He's a good boy, yes he is. So that's them. This is Quimby in his natural state. People have said that I have a way with animals. I, I don't know how much I agree with that. I mean, Quimby here will, he'll let anybody do this, anybody. I will say though that more than once, uh, I've had this experience where I'll be at a friend's house and one of their cats will come up to me and uh, sit next to me on the couch or whatever and, you know, be purring and I'll scratch his head or whatever. And the friend will eventually say, oh, wow, uh, that's really weird. She doesn't usually like people or she usually hides for two hours when guests come over or something like that. My wife calls me the Druid and uh, I always liked that character class in Dungeons and Dragons, so I just roll with that. Get it? All right, that's enough silliness for this week. I will say that uh, bringing animals into my life may have put kind of a damper on spontaneity a little bit, but personally, I hate spontaneity. They've definitely had a very positive effect on my life for sure, and uh, will undoubtedly play a role in whatever my life reload is ongoing. Right, buddy? I'd love to hear how animals may have changed your lives and what role, if any, they've played in your life reload. Just hashtag those comments, Animal Reload. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, enjoy your autumn. We'll see you next time. Say bye, Quimby. Bye. Bye. I sacrifice you. But it has also been widely documented in scientific literature that animals help people on the autism spectrum. Bye bye. Bye bye, everybody. <laughs> but it's also been widely documented in scientific literature that animals eat small babies. helps them with recovery from meltdowns, oft times help uh, to... I think I'm gonna have a meltdown right now. <laughs>